Hi there, and welcome to a mindful bird sit with Bird Mentor. Today we're going to be looking at the importance of giving our attention to the common birds and common friends in our neighborhood and how they can actually help us get more connected to the maybe more elusive birds. I have a story to share to start us with, so let's check it out now. So um, this morning I went out for, I usually go for a walk or something to kind of find what I want to do with you all um, if I haven't already thought of something. And this morning I, you know, I got myself dressed, like looked like a human, got my binoculars, I got dressed, like everything was like, all right, I'm ready to go for a walk. I had this plan. I was going to like, it was going to take a while for some reason in my mind to like find the, the thing, the focus for today. So I come down the stairs, walk around the corner, and literally, like, just as I turn the corner to start my walk, I see a thrasher up ahead on the trail. And I was like, and so quickly in my mind, my mind was like, oh, it's just a thrasher. So keep going. Like, you haven't found your, you know, the focus for today. And I just stopped. I had already walked down pretty slowly and quietly. And I said, wait a minute maybe the thrasher has a message for me. You know, what do I know? Why, why would I dismiss the thrasher as, as, you know, being any less than to give me a message? And, and so I just waited for a few minutes and I saw this subtle motion in the bushes next to me. And I wouldn't have seen that if I kept going. First of all, I probably would have scared what was there. Second of all, um, I just, I, I don't think I would have seen it because I would have just kept going on my mission because I had this focus, you know, my intention. And and so I just waited and I soon saw this little vireo and I was like, who is that? And I got my binoculars on it. I was like watching it and there was two of them. And um, anyway, it turns out it was a, an immature uh, wide eyed vireo. And it's cool because the wide eye only shows up in like next year, like when they're when they're older. So it had a black eye. So that's why it was like, I was like, I don't know who this is. This bird has a black eye. It's a vireo. It's at the little yellow wash in the front. And it was so exciting, but I, I realized what a gift it was that the thrasher gave me because I, by, by being attentive to the thrasher and giving my attention and my sort of devotion to it in that moment, it opened up a whole other world for me. So that's what I want to bring to us today is this idea of connecting more deeply with those common friends of ours, the ones that it's easy for even the best of us to, to disregard them and um, and to say, oh, it's just a this or it's just a that, you know. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen the, the sexy birds because I was giving my attention to one of the common birds, you know. And so, all right, so let's get started. We're gonna that'll be our focus for today. And so, we'll be doing some looking and listening, kind of however they come to you. And so, get yourself settled. Connect with your place for a moment. And let's begin by connecting with our place, so our center. So go ahead and tap into your belly. I want you to just connect with that inner portion of your body right there. large plane to fly overhead too. So some people call that our lower Dantian, one of that the energy energy houses of our body. So just tapping into that that place in our body right now. And then bring your awareness now to your breath as it enters and leaves your body. Just noticing the sensations of the air coming in and out of your lungs, even how it touches, whether it's your nose or your mouth, however you're breathing in. And feel the air as it enters and how far it travels through your body. Right, beautiful. Now we'll stay within our body for another moment and let's connect with our heart. So moving over to the rhythm of our heart. So 
if you can find your own unique rhythm right now. Beautiful. Now just imagine that there is a warm golden light just washing down over your body, starting from the crown of your head and just melting all over your body. Some good juju just coming into you right now, all the way to the tips of your toes. And then by the time it gets to your feet, go ahead and let it just enter the earth as if you're sending your roots down into the earth, exploring the darkness, the coolness, all the critters down there. You can just let your breath fall into a natural rhythm now. can help you find your center. So as you, if you feel imbalanced or unbalanced at any point in the day, just send your roots down into the earth, feel the strength that your body has in that connection with the earth, and then bring it back up into your body. And now we're going to expand our awareness outward. So we'll begin First today with our ears. So go ahead and close your eyes for just a moment if you feel like you're in a safe place. And listen to the sounds that surround you. And you don't have to pick any particular direction. Just notice which sounds are attractive to you in this moment. Almost as if you could say thank you and good morning to each one and then move on to the next one, going and meeting and greeting another sound in your morning. So just explore how many different sounds and individuals you can meet and greet this morning. And don't forget to do this for the human-made sounds as well. Beautiful. So keep allowing your ears to pick up on new sounds as we now open our eyes. So gently open your eyes, letting your gaze fall on something that is a good distance away, maybe like a quarter of a football field. You could go half a football field if you want to, as far as distance goes. As long as you can find one point to focus on. Still allowing the sounds to come in. And now we're going to soften our gaze, soften everything around that one focal point and expanding it in all directions. So allowing your gaze to stretch further and further and further away from that one central point, but still allowing yourself to stay kind of locked in a sense on that one focal point.
Beautiful. So keep stretching your vision, your ears. And I know earlier I had said that I may have just passed by that subtle motion, but I might not have because it's this practice of owl eyes, this practice of softening our vision that has trained my eyes to pick up on the subtle details, the subtle motions. And so maybe I would have seen the little wide-eyed vireo wiggling the branches, wiggling the leaves as I passed. So today we're gonna to do something just a little bit different. I just had the inspiration to do this. So go ahead and set an intention, even though you don't know necessarily how I'm gonna guide us. Think about what it is that you'd like to, I don't necessarily wanna say get out of this experience. We don't wanna take anything necessarily, but. Who do you want to be during this experience? What's your intention for this time right now? Take just a moment to ponder that. And it doesn't have to be complex or big. It can be very simple, just easy. Good work. All right, so now let's begin by becoming friendly with our common friends. So some of you may have birds all around you, others may have none at this very moment. But I want you to stretch a little bit and do your best to find them. So if you're someone who has birds in your view or you can hear them, what I want you to do is focus on the bird that's the most common, the most familiar, the most, oh, it's just a, <laughs> that one. So I want you to spend some time. We're going to be quiet for a while this morning. And I'd like you to just give yourself to that one right now. Just allow yourself to spend some time with it, really get to know it. And then for those of you who may not be able to see any birds in this moment, I'd like you to just use your ears and your eyes and put that, that could be one of your intentions right now, is that you would like to become more familiar with one of the common birds in your yard today. So inviting someone to come in right now. And we'll just stay in silence for the next couple of minutes. And don't take it too seriously, you know, if you are someone who is trying that on, the idea of inviting someone to play with today, just remember that it is just play, right? We're just practicing, we're just playing right now, so don't take it too seriously and just see what happens.
work. So really allowing yourself to give your fullest attention as if nothing else mattered more than being with this one today. There was a story I heard recently that reminded me of one I'd heard a while ago, actually. And you can, they told it using the individual Jesus, but you can say Buddha, you can say the wisdom of, of the earth, you can say whatever you want for, for um, this one. But basically it was the story that, um, the, or the idea that what if, you know, what if Jesus is hiding in that person? What if, or in disguise? Like, what if this is Jesus in disguise? What if this is Buddha in disguise? What if this is, you know, the wisdom of the earth in disguise right now? So giving your attention to this one as if it was someone that you hold in the highest regard, the most reverence, and this one is that one right now today. And for those of you who either aren't seeing a bird in this moment, or maybe the one you were watching has left, you can take the silence and the space in between as an opportunity to practice the idea that you don't need them to show up. You don't need them. There's not that attachment to any particular outcome right now. So just allowing the natural world to do their thing knowing that you put your intention out there and just practicing your quiet mind.
And just remember that if your eyes aren't seeing anything in particular right now, just listen with your ears for the common voices, the ones that are really familiar to you and allow yourself to explore their voice right now if you can't see them. Beautiful work. So take the next moment or two to offer your gratitude and thanks to those that you uh, connected with in whatever form that you did today. All right, good work, everybody. So thanks for coming and participating and playing along. If you have to head out, then many blessings to you. If you'd like to stay in chat, then let's do it. So uh, I'm gonna mute myself in between because there's a large uh, HVAC unit that's hopefully not too, too bothersome, but it's quite loud at the moment, speaking of sounds. And just wondering if anyone wants to start us off in their share for what occurred for you this morning, what came up for you during this practice. Go for it, Claudia. Okay, I think I've got, yes, I've got it on. Um, yeah, I for my place to look at, I picked this big tree that's a ways off and there's, the breeze is just strong enough. It's like the leaves are just kind of quaking. It's almost like the movement of a quaking aspen, but all those leaves just moving softly is so beautiful to see. And then when you told us to, you know, to look for the bird to watch, and I was thinking, oh, I don't see any birds right now. And then one <clears throat> landed on a <clears throat> one of the electrical lines. We've got a lot of overhead electrical lines here in our neighborhood, and the birds really use them a lot. But anyway, so this one little bird came and sat down, and I was thinking he was on one line, and then I realized he was on one behind it, but I couldn't, just the way the light was on, and I couldn't see the line, so it kind of looked like he was just right in midair, just sitting there. Uh, but I figured that it was uh, probably a house finch, which are our most common little birds right now here. Um, but anyway, and then more were coming in, and I was enjoying watching them and how they'd come and sit on the line and then head off, and usually they'd head off in a certain direction. And then uh, they were all gone, and 
then I started hearing a scrub jay. And I think it was just one, but he was moving along, you know, apparently going from yard to yard over here. And uh, I couldn't see him, but I could hear him. But he just was, he had this constant, you know, he's constantly talking. <laughs> and it was, so that was, that was really cool to kind of, I could hear where he was going. So anyway, it was really good. Thank you. Yeah. How fun to be able to basically like watch with your ears, you know? Yes. Like you really need to see them. You could hear them and, and know where they are and what they're doing and maybe even what they're talking about. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I know that the jades around here, they've caught me a couple of times because the young ones are talking a lot now. And I'm like, gosh, what's going on over there? There must be some like owl in the tree or something. And it's like, oh, no, it's just the young jays. And yeah. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but that's a really I, I love that that story of um, being able to like be with the jay and kind of go on his or her journey with it, mm -hmm. you know, just by listening. Yeah. It's a good experience. There's connection too this morning that, you know, again, if we didn't sit to do this together, like we might not be um, a part of that, like a witness to that, that journey this morning, you know? Yeah. That's beautiful, Claudia. Thanks so much. Yeah. Right on. Sweet. Who else wants to share? Anybody? Don't have to be polite. Yeah, go for it. I, I do have something else to say. You know, when yeah. you were talking about imagining that 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 bird is like a being that you highly revere, and for me, what I was thinking is, I think of it as I was thinking of it as um, kind of a a symbol or a manifestation of the power and the glory and the generosity <clears throat> of my higher being, <clears throat> and also, you know, like. You know the greatness of creation and everything, and plus they're just as individuals they're so worthwhile, just you know as you know again manifestations of great generosity, <laughs> yeah, that's really powerful, you know, like what if we did look at the world in that way you know and and see the magnificence really you know the magic and magnificence and in every creature, every being, and um, just to wonder, you know, how we might walk in our day a little bit different, possibly, you know? Yeah, it's beautiful, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Linda, please. Um, I kind of keyed in with that too, and to me, I I, I was watching a, a pine siskin, and, um, and when you spoke about seeing the, um, the higher being in this pine siskin, the thought came to me was divine sparks. Like it's like the birds are divine sparks. And so the pine siskin was here and I was focused on him, but at the same time, at least seven or eight cedar wax wings came in um, and went to the uh, Canadian red choke berry tree that they, so they started eating the berries and then a red-breasted nuthatch came in, and a pygmy nuthatch came in, and three chickadees came in, which surprised me. The pine siskin was, um, just stayed there and uh, watched them all. It was just, it was very interesting to just see. But I kept thinking of them as, oh, look at all these divine parts. It was, it was just, it was pretty cool. Thank you. I, I love that image. Yeah, they totally are, uh, especially the siskins. You know. And I, in that moment, I don't know if you did or not, but what occurred to me is like that you had put yourself into like the body and the eyes of the pine siskin and you were observing the other ones like, oh, look, there's the chickadee. Look, there's this one. Look, there's this one. And like you got to sort of see through the siskin's eyes like the other the other birds. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's how it happened for you or not, but like that that can be something that's possible, you know, when you really do start to tap in to one particular individual or one species, um, being able to then see through their eyes the world. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, I like that. I'll try that a little bit more next time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, sweet, sweet. Thanks, Linda. Awesome. Who else wants to share their story? Susie, is that your hand or are you just... No? Okay. Um, 
I'm trying to think of what, uh, yeah, for me, um, I couldn't see any birds today. Um, in this moment, obviously I saw the, the, uh, thrasher and the white-eyed vireo earlier. Um, but at, actually I did for one moment, there was a couple that jumped across, but at first I didn't see any. So I was just listening and it took a moment, but the Carolina wren started to sing. And it brought me back to this morning when I first went outside to listen, it was still kind of dark out. And I was just listening to see who the first ones singing were. And and there was this bird, I, I at first I was like, I don't know who you are. Like you might be a new voice, you got a new voice. Oh, it's a, a sexy new bird, you know? And um, but it was it was sort of it was quiet in the way that it was singing. And and what I realized was like, I was like, oh, I think it's just doing a partial song right now. It might even be a young one beginning to like make its first song vocalizations. You know, they obviously make other vocalizations right out of the the egg, but um but when they first begin to like their first song, it just sort of felt like the, the energy that came across to me was like this one was, it was like it was practicing, but it didn't, you know, like if you're, if you're practicing, you might be a little embarrassed. Not that I think birds get embarrassed, but like that it, it just didn't want to be like totally loud just yet. And it was just like trying a couple different vocalizations and which is why I think it threw me off because it had a, a variety of different calls and so what I'm used to hearing with the Carolina Wren is that they stick to one phrase like they'll do it over and over and over they'll stick to it and do that phrase over and over they have a lot of variety in the phrases they can sing but they stick to that one phrase and then they repeat it but this one it was like it would do one or two and then it would change it and do one or two and then change and so I mean it could have been a thrasher that's also possible because they change often but I had this feeling that it was it was a young Carolina Wren. I don't know if that's true or not, but the the connection with the Carolina Wren that I was hearing during our sit just took me back to that moment this morning with that young one that I had actually forgotten about. And I was like, yeah, that was a kind of a special moment, you know, if that's what was happening. I mean, even if it wasn't what was happening, it was still a special moment. But um, just to imagine, like, getting to hear a bird's first song, you know, like, when does that happen? When do they actually first start to sing? And I'm sure it's different for every species, but it was just kind of exciting to think about. Like, wow, maybe this is the bird first trying out its voice, you know? So that was really fun for me. All right, anyone else before we go? Okay, oh, yeah, Nadine, please. So for me, it's raining where I am. And so there were no birds um, <clears throat> that I could see or hear for quite a while. Um, and when you had a start with sound, I was, I'm inside looking out through my like sliding windows and which I have open. And um, I couldn't quite hear many differences in the rain, but I was kind of imagining that on the different types of leaves or different plants or that the sound was varying with what the rain was hitting and if I was standing under it or near it. Um, and your, um, prompt about kind of the birds, we, I forget what you said, but take for granted. Um, I'll use that phrase for myself. Last night I was watching, um, like, a I don't know if they were sparrows or, but have these plain brown birds that, uh, just kind of a family of them, it seemed like a family arrived to, to feed right in the evening. and. Uh, part of me, I noticed part of me was like, oh, it's just you. And then I was like, oh, this family, like, I just had like connected to it. So that was really sweet. So I was just remembering into that um, during today's sit. And then I was curious, what, like, where are the birds during the rain? Are they, you know, wondering what, where they hang out? And then right towards the end, um, I finally started hearing something at first I thought it maybe was a crow and then I thought oh maybe that's a jay or some jays but something like that just off in the distance um and then just as we were sharing a little woodpecker and a hummingbird um showed up so yeah that's just me 
Oh, Nadine, thank you for that. Um, there was a lot in what you shared. I'm trying to remember there was one point, I'm not sure if you guys got to see it, but just the reason I turned around, there was a wood stork that just flew over. I don't know if you guys saw it fly. I know, like, they're, they're, I think actually, I don't know if they're close to extinction, but they're threatened in like most of the country. But like here in South Carolina, this is where they hang out in the summertime. And I, I, I wouldn't say I see them every day, but I see them infrequently, but it's enough where it's, it's just amazing. I mean, still, they're such an elegant, incredible wild bird. So apologies, because I was like, oh, I could see it. I could see the reflection in my computer, actually. And I saw the body shape and I was like, I thought that's a woodstork. So anyway, but there's something that you said, Nadine. Um, I think it was about connecting. It was like connecting back to the family. I think it was like you were connecting with the family of the birds that showed up. And then there was something you said after that that I wanted to touch on. I'm trying to remember what that was right now. Do you remember what you said after talking about the family? Um, well, and then I started saying I couldn't really hear, I was remembering the family because nothing was showing up. And then I didn't hear anything for a long time. And then I th thought I heard some crows right towards the end and blue jays. And if there's something in between that, I don't remember. <laughs> I think before that, um, I'm not remembering at the moment what it was, but anyway, I appreciate your share. There was something exciting that I was like, oh, cool. I want to talk about that. But I don't remember what it is right now. Yeah. So thank you so much for your, just your story and your perspective. And it's interesting how I think at least for you and I, maybe for other people that the practice of going in and listening um, allowed us to, to, to like access some memories, you know, some bird memories and um, yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Thanks, Nadine. All right, y'all. Well, thanks for playing today, and I hope you all have a beautiful day. And in this, like, it almost feels like a pre-transition season. It's sort of like doesn't feel we're definitely not in like full, you know, migration or full transition, but things are starting to move in certain parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And Joy, you're in Canada, right? I just wanted to hear from you for a minute what um because i know you guys usually start to feel it before the rest of us because you start to notice your birds like leaving in a sense so have you started to see any any birds um not there at the moment no not at all actually i mean we're in the height of summer here it's the hottest day it will be okay. the hottest day we've had yet uh, there are more birds coming into my yard right now than there have been because they tend to disappear off into the to the yeah. bush for a while and now they're coming back and this morning, I got a, a family of young uh, white-throated sparrows popping about. The, they weren't the ones that I was actually focusing on. It was the blue jay, who's um, been my friend here all winter. It's the same one coming back. I can, I'm 99% I'm sure. Um, and he was uh, enjoying the seeds I'd put out and the and the um, peanuts and having little arguments with the uh, the gray squirrel and the chipmunk that were also after the same season at the same time. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, maybe it's more of the, I'm thinking of the shorebirds and whatnot, that they start to, you you might not be that far north, but the, the, the ones who nest, you know, up in more in like northern Canada and whatnot, that they've, I think that some of them have started to make some, some movements um but i'm not sure like how much or whatever so i'm just always curious i love that's one of the reasons i love connecting with people all over the country is because we get to hear you know tapping into everyone's experience and how different and unique it can be but also like there's a, a thread that connects us as well so yeah it's yeah. usually the hummingbird that leaves first and and i still have hummingbirds around here so they okay. haven't gone in yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Oh. That'll be a good one to look out for for you. Will you let us know when you when you first notice that they're they're not showing up anymore? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It'd be fun to start to track. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming today and I hope you have a beautiful week. We'll see you next time, okay? All right. Enjoy.